mouth disease, 2011, South Africa. There is a calamity brewing in South Africa. One which will obviously be underreported and one where no one will consider what really actually happened. So for the last 20 years, our dear African national criminals have, instead of taking the provided budget that was supposed to keep the red line and the protected areas in place to prevent the spread of foot and mouth disease, instead of actually maintaining the fences, the money disappeared into the greedy little pockets of some of our freedom fighters from the past and their families, like it's happening with virtually everything in South Africa, the dear freedom fighters has got these little greedy little pockets that just suck out whatever they can, it goes from the top to the bottom, right through, and uh, therefore the necessary actions and normal preventions do not happen. That cause obviously a massive problem, like nobody really wants to do anything about the disease in South Africa, because in this case the disease has started in an area called Inguavuma, which will mean that the voters of the particular government, which stays in the area, which is mainly blacks, is going to lose a small fortune because all the animals will have to be culled. And like if we let's let's have a look at the, the absolute animal disaster that takes place. In 2001, foot and mouth disease was in the United Kingdom. It spread so fast that eventually the army had to be called in and they had to kill four million animals to try and prevent the spread of the disease to all the animals. Now, wouldn't it be wonderful that if they could do the same for humans? I mean, you have the swine flu spreading and the way to prevent it is to kill everybody with swine, swine flu. Uh, but that's, I mean, the humans, that's not done. But with animals, things like this is done. Is there alternatives? Obviously, I am in no position to say that there would be any alternatives. The point being, though, that is that the disease is allowed to spread through greed. The problem is that this is an economic disaster and an animal disaster that is taking place. And furthermore, there is no guarantee to say with any form of certainty in South Africa now if the meat has actually entered the food chain because greed in South Africa is the boss. Therefore, much of these animals could be in the food chain now as people try and save money and as we well know with the disasters in South Africa the government are less and less inclined to actually support those that suffer in disasters and there is no check and balances because the balances always end up in the greedy pockets so the road I'm driving on right now is one that was suffering from similar greedy side effects and was never done properly because the money disappeared and took more than two years longer to complete because the money disappeared. Yes, and it was all who got the money? Somebody that was in the pocket of the African national criminals. It's so with everything in South Africa now, thanks to our dear brothers, the apartheid fighters, that were part of NGOs and that fought apartheid so diligently in South Africa, but seemingly the NGOs were just corporate greedy 
pirates that were under disguise looking for ways to control resources in South Africa. So you can say for certainty if you look at the outcome now, the cumulative effect of all the NGOs that was involved in the apartheid the time in fighting apartheid, they were all greedy extensions of corporations that now has their hands in the resources of South Africa and they hold the political politicians in their pocket with the, and have a whole, imagine it, a whole political party they own. I wonder in which countries this works the same way. It seems America definitely that your politicians are all in the pocket of the corporations, so just greed that makes the decisions. It's never what's best for all in the country, what's best for the animals, what's best for the humans. So here we're looking at this disaster again. I mean, it's like a genocide that takes place due to greed, because instead of preventing the disease spreading, millions of animals will probably end up being culled. And uh, nobody will even flutter an eye. I wonder, and yes, forgive me vegans and vegetarians that I'm here again pointing a finger. I wonder, I wonder where you are in this. I haven't seen you scream about the four million animals that died in the United Kingdom in 2001. I don't see you even noticing that this is taking place in South Africa right now because you're only worried about your own moral imperative. You're not really concerned about the plight of animals. You're concerned about your self-righteousness to have a nice image that apparently you're better. If I see you everywhere standing up to take point to bring about a world that's best for all. I mean, then I will call you a vegetarian or a vegan, but I don't see that. You're just participating in the same economic system that abuse in every way possible. You're just greedy for a nice image. You're not really interested in getting your hands dirty. You're not willing to give up that which protects you from the disasters of the system. So, the same happens with the activists. Look at the activists that was part of the apartheid fight. They were not really activists. They were controlled by money. So it was the same with all activists in the world. They all belong to NGOs. These NGOs control their activists with money. And if you don't do the party line, the corporate line, to make sure that the corporation benefit eventually, you get the money line. And the money line will always be the tight line that keep you in line, so that you do not step out of line and actually bring about a change as an activist. Therefore, none of the activists in this world currently can be called activists. They are just in line with the corporations through the money line. It is best to start investigating and to see if you can find it somewhere deeply hidden in your consciousness, the possibility to support the system that's best for all, to support a world where everything is done in a way that is best for all. And that is possible. Investigate equal money and equal life. Prepare yourself politically. Let's bring about the change in the world using democracy. One man, one vote. And one by one, if we accumulate the will of people to bring about a group that stand for what's best for all, the accumulation will eventually, through democracy, leads to a new government, one that is run by people that truly care about changing the world to a better place for all. I'm waiting for you.